Let us, let us pray. Holy God, out of your love and mercy, you breathed in, into dust the breath of life, creating us, you, and all other living creatures to worship you and to love you according to our nature and ability. For us, your people, we pray that you will call forth our sincere prayers and acts of tenderness during this coming year. Strengthen us to face the fragile na nature of our lives, that we may reach with confidence for the grandeur and joy of serving you, trusting your mercy to stay with us throughout our lives and beyond. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Listen now to the promises we have in Scripture of God's mercy and forgiveness. God sent Christ into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. God is our refu refuge and strength, a present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear through the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. The Lord, of, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Let us pray together in the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I 
as we find it in the prophet Isaiah, chapter 58, verses 3 through 12. Why have we fasted and you see it not? People are talking to God. Uh, why have we humbled ourselves and you take no knowledge of it? Behold, in the day of your fast, you seek your own pleasure and oppress all your workers. This is God's answer to them. Behold, you fast only to quarrel and to fight, and to hit with a wicked fist. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice to be heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day for a person to humble himself? Is it to bow down his head like a reed and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast and a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this fast, is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh. Then shall the light, your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness, if you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness and your gloom be as the noonday. And the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire in scorched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters do not fail. And your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt you shall raise up what the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. And from the New Testament, the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know that your right, what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they've received their reward. So when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts 
Be acceptable in thy sight, O thou who art our strength and our redeemer. Amen. When I perform a wedding ceremony, I always include something about forgiveness. The couple getting married may not remember it, me saying that, but I think a wedding day is the perfect day to talk about the fact that no marriage can survive without forgiveness. If a husband and wife can forgive each other, there's an excellent chance the family will be a healthy one. Of course, that presupposes that there's also been a sincere apology and a renunciation of the behavior that created the need for an apology. But being able to forgive is not a guarantee, but it sure increases the chances that the marriage will be a healthy one. We're gathered together tonight to observe Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday is the first day of Lent. You may know that already. Yesterday was Fat Tuesday, as they call it. It's the day for Mardi Gras, which we don't have around here, but anyway, some churches do, some communities do. But this is Ash Wednesday in the first day of Lent. Traditionally, the Roman Catholics and Episcopalians, Lutherans, and Anglicans have made a lot more of Ash Wednesday than Presbyterians have. Lent comes from the Anglo-Saxon word lengthen, which means lengthen. That refers to the fact that the daylight hours get longer and longer in the spring. Lent lasts for 40 days to parallel the 40 days Jesus spent in the wilderness being tempted. But if you count it up, you won't be able to figure it out. It's 40 days minus all the Sundays in that period. (coughs) Sundays aren't counted in the 40 days of Lent because each Sunday is a celebration of Easter. So anyway, the people that were counting such things omitted the Sundays. I remember the first time I heard about Lent was hearing Catholic friends at school talk about what they had given up. And for some reason, I felt a little envious of them. They got to display their faith and their suffering because of what they were giving up. It got them a lot of attention and bound the Catholic students together, even in a public school. Now, many Presbyterian and other Protestant denominations are also celebrating Ash Wednesday and Lent. And I think it has increased our awareness of different aspects of our faith. But first of all, what are the ashes all about? The ashes stand for both death and repentance. There are numerous places in the Old Testament where someone is said to repent with sackcloth and ashes. In the good, the wild story of Jonah, if you remember that book of the Bible, all the Ninevites who he finally got to preach to after being swallowed by the big fish. But anyway, he convinced them, and all the Ninevites, including their animals, repented in sackcloth and ashes, and God forgave them. Sackcloth is like burlap, very uncomfortable to wear, and also ugly. We cover ourselves with this material to sit in the dirt and toss ashes on ourselves would show that we don't care about our physical appearance or about our comfort because some overwhelming feeling has overtaken us, grief or remorse or shame. Ashes also remind us that we are immortal. Someday we will die. We will leave this life. In the traditional service at the graveside, when when a person's body is laid to rest in a grave, These words have been said, In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our brother or our sister and their name, and we commit his or her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Fasting is something some people do to observe Lent. For those of you who have never fasted, it can help you focus on your prayers and also help you identify with Jesus who fasted in the wilderness. 
It can also help us to identify with people who are hungry. Most of us don't let ourselves suffer hunger for more than half a day. I'm, I know I don't. I have fasted, though, in the past for 24 hours. But I confess I don't fast for more than one meal now, and I don't do that very often. I can't imagine what it is like to go without food for a week or to try to survive with only one meager meal a day, day after day. Fasting is used in many of the religions around the world. Extreme fasting, of course, can cause various health problems and even death. Some Christians react to the idea of Ash Wednesday and Lent with a kind of gloomy dread. But it can be a season of hope. If our goal is to try to get closer to God by trying some new spiritual disciplines or with a special study or by fasting, we need to first examine our motives. If we are approaching it with dread, we're probably doing those things for somebody else or maybe even to win points with God. But God gives us love and forgiveness as a free gift. There is not a point system or a grade involved. The prophet Isaiah said, Is not this the fast that I choose? He said, For God. God says, The fast I choose is to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house. When you see the naked, to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Giving something up for Lent does not really address what God is saying about a godly righteousness. A godly righteousness begins with honest self-reflection. Genuine repentance begins with honest self-reflection. The next step is to recall God's gracious desire to forgive us. We don't have to earn it. We can't earn it. Psalm 51 gives us the perfect prayer for what we need, and we read some of that this morning in our prayer of confession. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a, sp a steadfast spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. The separation from the joy of our relationship with God comes from sin. And healing from that separation can only come from God as well. When we experience the great joy of a right relationship with God, an awareness of God's loving presence and forgiveness, God's love is renewed. The energy and motivation for living out God's great mission and purpose is renewed. We can use the 40 days of Lent, 40 plus Sundays, to give us the opportunity to extend the insights and benefits of Ash Wednesday. Psalm 51 has been seen as applying especially to King J David when he, after he came face to face with his great sin of sending Bathsheba's husband to his death. Remember that story. But the words of the psalm can apply equally to any of us. And parts of it have often been used in prayers of confession. Perhaps it applies to us most significantly when we suddenly become aware of a sin we had not previously been aware of. For us, that might be a prejudice we hold unconsciously toward a person or a group of people. It might happen when our actions, which felt entirely innocent and appropriate to us at the time, happen to cut someone else to the core, and someone makes us aware of that. Or it might just be that we have said or done something that seemed like a good idea at the time, but which later seems like it might have hurt someone. Ash Wednesday gives us the opportunity to grapple with any hidden sins or unconscious sins that we might have, and also with any that we don't have, have 
don't know about offhand but might discover in meditation or in prayer or in scripture or in honest conversations with other people. Much of our sin is internal. We tend to focus on sinful actions, but actions arise from what's inside of us. For instance, if we take some kind of pleasure in the obvious sinfulness of others or in bad consequences to them, we're overlooking our own challenge of loving the sinner. What can we come to understand about those caught in obvious sin? Does God want us to heap more shame on them? Or does God want us to communicate love and acceptance to them? Some people grow up with few kind words ever spoken to them. They may need that from us, regardless of how they are living. And loving real enemies is tough, but that's what we're told to do. But again, the purpose of this soul searching is not to heap loads of guilt on us, but to increase our awareness of ourselves and those around us. It is also to increase our awareness of God's great grace. How can we keep from finding hope and joy in that? So I hope we can all take advantage of this time of reflection and transition from winter to spring. It's a time of transition for all of us as we get, begin to emerge more and more from the restrictions of the pandemic. Is it possible for us to look inward and to identify our tendency to look only to our own needs in a stressful time of transition? Is it possible then to call on our gracious God to help us look to all the rest of God's children and their needs as well? When we are restored in our hearts and minds and in relationship with God, God Jesus calls us to follow him. But that doesn't mean we have to plot out every detail of the journey, that we don't know all of it to begin with. A popular preacher of my parents' generation, Peter Marshall, some of you may have heard of him, titled one of his sermons, Under Sealed Orders. What a great description for a Christian. We are under sealed orders. Are you ready to be surprised? God's surprises can be some of the best times in the life of faith. We don't have to plan out every step. In fact, we can't. We have to leave an opening for God's leading. And I don't think you will be disappointed with the results. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us sing together hymn 433, and we're to sing the first three lines two times through. And then we will come forward if you like. We have ashes ready to put on your forehead. You can come up and stand on the front steps or in front of the front steps. Amen. 